Reconciliation of Book and Taxable Income Problem 1. Guava Inc. has financial accounting book income of $569,300. This book income amount includes a $50,700 bad debt expense determined by the allowance method. Actual write-offs this year were $48,000. Based only on this information, compute Guava's taxable income. So this question is asking to compute the taxable income and we're given the accounting book income number. Anytime that you're dealing with a question where it gives you the accounting book income, it gives you some specific items and some information and it wants you to compute taxable income, this is a reconciliation of book and taxable income problem. Now the idea is that under financial accounting, under GAAP, generally accepted accounting principles, there are certain rules that apply and many of the rules are the same as tax. So many of those rules are similar to the tax rules, which tax the rules that are determined by Congress under law. So many times they're the same, and then there's sometimes they're not the same. So it depends on the specific application in that situation. Now there are what's called permanent and temporary differences. Permanent differences are things where they're never going to be, they're going never going to change when you compare the financial accounting application to the tax application. These are things where the rules are hard fast and they just will not change um, with respect to over time. The, the, it really comes down to a permanent versus a timing difference or a temporary difference. So an example of a permanent difference, municipal bond interest. All interest income is included in financial accounting income as long as it's been, you know, incurred if it's under the accrual method, or I should say it's been earned under the accrual method. Um, if it's under the cash method of accounting, then it's been received. But the idea under um, tax is municipal bond interest, specific municipal bond interest is excluded from gross income and it will never be included. There's other things like life insurance proceeds that are received upon someone's death and financial accounting that can be considered income. And there's lots of other things as well. Again, general rule is that you start off saying, hey, they're the same, but then there's some special rules that say they're not the same, they're different. So that's an example of permanent difference. A temporary difference, the best example is depreciation. Think about when you learn about financial accounting, all the different types of depreciation that can be calculated. Some are faster than others. For example, double declining balance, you take more depreciation early on rather than later on compared to straight line. Well, for financial accounting, most businesses use the straight line method because it's simple and um, it, it just across the board it keeps it, again, for simplicity, it keeps it across the board for a company and it's what most businesses out there do. Now, under tax, tax depreciation, we use what's called MAKERS, Modified Accelerated Cost Recovery System Depreciation. And there's a few other different depreciation systems that can be used, but that's the default rules, default rule MAKERS. There's something called the ADS system, Alternative Depreciation System, that can be used in tax. We use the MAKERS system generally. And MAKERS is usually, it depends on the property, but it's usually, for most property, it's going to be faster than straight line. Regardless of the method, whether it's straight line versus not straight line or faster, book versus tax, again, if there's differences, the, amounts, the amount of depreciation taken will be the same. And that's what a temporary or timing difference is. If you're recovering the full amount over five years, but you're doing it in different, different amounts, depending on the method you're using, that's where you have differences in timing, where over that entire five years, you take the same amount. So that's what a temporary difference is. Basically, it's in the total, looking at all the years, it's the same amount, but it's just different amounts depending on the method, book or gap versus tax rules. Again, book or gap, we usually use straight line. Tax rules, we usually use makers. And again, tax rules, makers usually or almost always is faster depreciation earlier on. And then, you know, the later years less. So there's this difference that's created. So that's permanent versus temporary differences. In this question, we've got the information presented, book income, and whenever you're doing a taxable income question where you're given book income, your starting point is always going to be to take book income. So we're given the book income in the problem, and we're told the book income is $569,300. Now with these reconciliation of book to taxable income questions, where you're starting with your book income, that is the step one, to find your book income, you're going to adjust for the amounts given to you in the problem because the question's saying, based only on this information, get taxable income. So we start with our book income and we go through each of these items that are that we're told. Now we're really only told, um, we're told a few things, but it's really only um, one specific aspect of the of the financial statements versus tax, and that is it deals with the 
accounts receivable, and bad debt expense. We're told that the book income includes a $50,700 bad debt expense. So that is what's on the the uh, financial accounting, the gap, the income statement, bad debt expense, $50,700 determined under the allowance method. Now remember, under gap, under gap, we use when we're writing off bad debt. Remember, bad debt is when you write off allowance for doubtful accounts. We understand that not all bad, that not all accounts receivable will be collected. Some of them were going to become worthless. We have to write those off. It's just a cost of doing business. Under gap, under generally accepted kind principles, we use the allowance method. We establish the allowance account, allowance for doubtful accounts at the end of every year to basically write off certain accounts before the previous before the next year and then we go through and we take away from the allowance count so the idea is that we set up this allowance ahead of time and we go ahead and we debit the bad debt expense earlier on now under tax we don't use the allowance method we use the direct write-off method which means we write off or write the expense when the specific account is considered worthless we're not going to be able to collect it so those are two different methods. Allowance method, you record the bad debt expense when you estimate for the next year. The direct write-off method, you record the bad debt expense when the specific account is considered worthless and no longer collectible. So actual write-offs this year were $48,000. So that should give us the amount for purposes of the, of the taxes, of tax. So the idea here is book income, which is what we're starting with, we're going to adjust it by the amount of bad debt expense under the allowance method. Now, let's just take a, a second to think about the income statement. Under gap, income statement, our income statement, we have revenues minus expenses, and that gives us net income. So when we're told that our accounting book income is $569,300, we're basically saying the, the net income is $569,300. To get that amount, we subtracted away, we had, we had various revenue, we had various expenses in total, and within that expense amount included a $50,700 amount, So if, which, was, which was the bad debt expense. It was included in, amount, in that amount. Of course, there's other expenses as well, but bad debt expense equaled that amount. Now, the idea here is if we're trying to adjust for... Okay, taxable income, we have to adjust for the fact that we're starting with our book income. We're not using the allowance method. We're using the direct write-off method. We have to add that back because if it's an expense, we need to add back what we did for financial accounting purposes and then subtract away what we should do for tax purposes. So we're going to add back that bad debt expense that we recorded for gap purposes. So add back bad debt expense for gap, for gap and that's going to be $50,700. And then remember, for tax, we use the direct write-off method, and we're told that actual write-offs during the year were $48,000. So that means that we're going to take $48,000 of, and we're going to we're going to take that as a deduction on the tax return on the Form 1120 for this corporation. Okay. So we subtract away the bad debt expense under the direct write-off. I'll abbreviate with a W, direct write-off method. And we're going to subtract away the $48,000, the $48,000 amount. So see what we're doing? The book income, again, that $50,700 bad debt expense, that was subtracted away in calculating the $569,300. No, for taxable income, we do not calc we do not use that number. So we have to add that back. We do use the direct write-off method, which means the actual amount that was of of write-offs during the year, which is $48,000. So those should be subtracted away. So again, we start our book income, we add back the method that we shouldn't be using, we subtract away the bad debt expense that we should be using under the direct write-off method, and then we get the taxable income, and the taxable income amount in this question equals $572,000. $572,000, that's our answer. So to summarize, we start with book income, step one. Step two, we add back the bad debt expense under gap because that book income is a gap number, 
That is a gap number. So we add that back because that is not what we use for tax purposes. Step three, we then subtract away the bad debt expense under direct write-off method that we do use for tax purposes. And then finally, step four, we get our taxable income. And that is the correct answer, $572,000.